um, uh, about someone who was not very wealthy who, who wanted to transition and uh, brought that to HBO, brought that to Showtime like 10 years ago. Um, and, um, and sort of, so it's kind of been on my mind. And, um, and so I was just imagining as, as you know, as, as we have like marriage and like as sort of as, as gay and lesbian people sort of move to the center, I was thinking about who gets left behind in that fight. And, you know, if this is our, if our fight is for sort of heteronormalcy, then where does it leave other people? And I just thought like, you know, where does the trans community, I'm imagining where the trans community gets left. And uh, I think, you know, you see some splinterings even now. Um, and, you know, that, and this is just sort of imagining a world where, where then the backlash becomes to backlash against people who are trans. The, the government, you know, like, I mean, as we get less and less privacy, there's a bunch of issues tied up in there, in sort of the conception of the idea. Uh, and, one, and one of the big major things is like a lack of, complete lack of privacy. And Brian, is this a true story? Based on a true story, yeah. <laughs> uh, can you talk a little bit about where the truth maybe inspired? Yeah, well, story? so my husband and I were sleeping on a double futon for far too long. We decided to go to um, our regular person's bed. And I went into an actual bed store where they had a computer, like an old school computer, hooked up to the to the bed, and it led me through that very same series of questions up to the computer saying you are a male with a male partner, and I was like, well, well that's cool, I think, but what's it going to do with the information, like you're saying about the privacy, is like, and then started kind of bombarding me with, um, with advertisements, and that's when I left, so I kind of bolted, and then I thought this would be, a, this is a good um, starting point for a short screenplay, so... And for our uh, Spooner actors, can you guys introduce yourselves? Yes. Um, well, we have two more actors here, um, Sue Hoyle and Richard Ballin, who were, you would recognize them from the store, I'm sure. Um, and I was wondering about the relationship. How was it building this? Did you guys know, did you know each other? Or how did you? Uh, ben and I are actually both comedians here in New York, and we knew each other for a good year before we did Spooners. And so yeah, we were friends for a while. And he's the one who got me involved with it. We, he wanted me to audition for Brian for it. And so uh, we put each other on tape, or put ourselves on tape, and Brian got back to us and was like, you two guys are the couple. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> And, and how did you guys work together to build this intimacy of sharing that, or like, I mean, being comedian? <laughs> Not that. It's um, well, how did you guys work together, maybe from the uh, you mean, standpoint? Because it's obvious that we hate each other's guts. <laughs> you can't stand to be in the same room. It's very difficult. But we, we actually did date briefly. And, um... <laughs> <laughs> What happens when two comedians date? I'm just wondering. <laughs> 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 Is that hilarious? And then it's not funny at all. Does that answer your question? <laughs> 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 but we, yeah, no, we, we remain friends. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so it was very easy. Actually, actually I read the, the script and I uh, immediately thought of Walter. Um, and just in the character description, you may. Or uh, Nelson. Um, so yeah. Yeah. And uh, Rose, with your actors, how did you um, cast your film, and what was? I mean, I'm, I know this is an assumption, but I'm guessing there's a lot of New York community in this film. Uh, yes, we cast them um, uh, out of New York. The lead actor that actually um, is is now uh, Washington based, but um, but he's uh, Boston based. So he was the only person who was sort of outside. Uh, so we kind of so I kind of did a sort of a larger casting that. But like someone like Amy is like lives yeah. sort of lives, lives sort of like next door. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and since, Brooklyn, yeah. So since you guys are, are friends, was there a collaboration with the script? Or were you able to? Um, a little. I mean, we, you know, I mean, we, Rose had written this great script, and um, we did a little bit. We had to have one rehearsal at her, her house where we um, had a little bit of improv going on, a little bit at, on set and stuff as well. But um, so a little bit, yeah. Yeah. It was. Uh, I think generally it's just a matter of. Um, I, I think for the most part, I was uh, with this piece. I was working with uh, 
um, uh, it was a mix of, of actors and sort of non-actors and or, you know like people's uh, aspirational uh, actors, so, you know, sort of first timers. Um, so I wanted to keep it a little bit looser, and there were some things that we just broke just to you know just to kind of ask questions like when he's like you know why are you here? Or that was just a question that we just yeah, we can I just some of that, yeah. you know brought one over and said like ask him why he's here, and then you know you get like these sort of and that's actually something that I kind of. Uh, funnily enough, did not do and have not done that much in my career, but really observed Stacy doing uh, more on concussion and, and sort of like that kind of, you know, kind of doing a couple of different things or letting the camera on see what happens kind of a thing. Uh. Audrey and Gail, did you guys fall in love with them? Yes! <laughs> I was telling them before the screen that when we showed this film in Los Angeles, people were loving them and like hoping that they would be there at the, <laughs> at the Q and A, and they didn't understand why. And, okay. <laughs> and I think it's of course their their charisma and their story. It's so beautiful and this falling falling in love story. How many years have you?